Dr. Wimpenyama has potential to be the best ever, it's no secret that Michael Jordan is widely regarded as the greatest of all time. And to be the greatest, it takes six championships, the Chicago Bulls have won their sixth, five MVPs, NBA most valuable player, relentless abuse towards your teammates, hey Mike, how's it going man? Stop talking to me! And of course, the most important of all, it takes a major gambling addiction. Haha, <laughs> Mike, how much money you wanna bet today? Four billion dollars. <laughs> But what if instead of a borderline psychopath, the Bulls had taken Victor Wembanyama in the draft? A 7'4 phenom from France who has the potential to fill the shoes of Michael Jordan? But the question is, will he? Because in order to do that, Wimby would not only need to get one championship, but six championships just like Mike. But as we all know, in the 80s, the average salary of an NBA player was like 8 bucks in a Dairy Queen coupon. I'm rich! Please subscribe so I can pay the bills. So with the rest of the Bulls roster making minimum wage, Victor would have to put the entire franchise on his back. And when you put a 7 foot 4 guy with guard skills in the NBA in the 80s, he can do that. As he would average about 24 points and easily win Rookie of the Year, squeaking this team full of electricians and plumbers into the playoffs somehow. Second best player on this team looks like a Walgreens manager. Doesn't really matter. Wimby's in the playoffs. And as exciting as it was that this young rookie led this horrid team to the playoffs, it didn't seem like they'd be there for long. Because when you're facing a guy like three-time NBA champion and three-time league MVP Larry Bird, you're gonna need more than a Home Depot employee to guard him. As he would torch this Bulls team top to bottom, sweeping them 3-0 in a best of five series. Meaning that, yes, Victor would be exiting in the first round of his first ever playoff run, losing to the Celtics just like Mike did. So you could say that for now, he was filling the shoes of Michael Jordan, who, keep in mind, won his first championship in 1991. But breaking into the 1986 season, this one-man show wouldn't produce much more. As Victor would do his absolute best to carry on both ends of the floor, he would even make the playoffs again. Additionally, going up 2-0 on the Knicks in the first round, but then Patrick Ewing would pelvic thrust his way to the Comeback, sending the young Frenchman packing in his second ever playoff run. And in the 1987 season, you could say Wimby was starting to get desperate for some help, which it would be on its way soon enough, but for now, he would have to make do with old ass George Gervin. Bloody! And I mean no disrespect to NBA legend George Gervin, I'm sure you're a phenomenal human being. But in this season, being a phenomenal human being wouldn't cut it for the Chicago Bulls, and they would be missing the playoffs. And believe me when I say this bothered Victor greatly. Just like Jordan, he was a competitor. He needed somebody by his side to go win championships. And in the 1988 season, that somebody would be Scotty Maurice Pippen Jr. Getting drafted straight out of Central Arkansas, and having an immediate impact on this Bulls team, helping Wimby get this team right back into the playoffs. The good news is, Scotty and Wimby, they're in the playoffs. The bad news is, they're playing the Bad Boy Pistons in round one. Pretty confident that Bill Lambeer is gonna commit a felony on Wimby. And as this series got underway with the first two games in Detroit, the word felony would not do justice to what this Pistons team would try and do to Wimby. They would be physical with him. They wouldn't even let him inside the paint, and this Pistons team, of course, would go up 2-0. But this thing wouldn't be over just yet, as Scotty and Wimby would go back to Chicago and take the next two, all for the Pistons to continue their assault in Game 5 and send the Bulls packing. So I know that if you're a Wimby fan, this might be extremely concerning, because now Victor is 0-3 in the playoffs. But this year, with the addition of Scotty Pippen, was the closest he's ever been. And so now, we were, of course, teed up for the 1989 season, where this Bulls franchise would finally start to catch its stride. As in round one of the playoffs, they would be a seventh seed, facing the New 
York Knicks. But at this point, the chemistry was so high that their seeding didn't matter. Wimby and the Bulls would stun the Knicks with a sweep. Moving on to round two against the Cavs, who would put up more of a fight, but ultimately, guess what? The Bulls were beating them in six games. And so at this point, Victor had practically put Chicago back on the map, meaning that the confidence of the entire roster was as high as it's ever been. And additionally, Victor's confidence was as high as it's ever been. But in a time period where phones look like this and people dress like this, Victor's basketball skill was so ahead of its time that opposing fans felt like he was some kind of evil wizard. This is a witchcraft! But evil wizard or not, the Bulls would have to look forward, as they would look ahead to the Eastern Conference Finals, where they would have to face again the Detroit Pistons. Except this time, Wimby, he wanted his revenge. He wanted it so bad that the Pistons would wipe the floor with the Bulls in five games. And I know it's upsetting. The physical abuse of Bill Lambeer was just too much. So much so that Wimby decided to have a couple words with him during the game. Hey man, that really hurt. I know, it was supposed to. So while for now, Bill Ambeer is terrifying, he wouldn't be the only felon that Wimby would face. But we're gonna have to focus on the Predator later, as for now, we're moving into the 90s. And entering a new decade, this Bulls team seemed the exact same. As once again, they'd have a pretty mediocre record in the East, finishing as a six seed. And this was really discouraging, because at this point, people figured Wimby was just a highlight machine and couldn't win in the playoffs, just like Michael Jordan. But also just like Michael Jordan, Wimby would now be having a chance to prove all the haters wrong, as he would once again be playing this team full of psychopaths, except this time in the first round. He keeps losing to them. Like, I know Wimby weighs like 90 pounds and he's 8 feet tall, but like, come on, man. And so as things got underway, Bill Lambeer with the windshield of a 2008 Honda Civic on his face was out for blood. And not only would Bill Lambeer turn this series into an MMA match, but also the elite rim finishing of Isaiah Thomas would put this Pistons team up 2-0. But Wimby, just like before, would say not so fast. And he would go back to Chicago, helping this Bulls team tie things up into a piece. But like I said, we've seen this before. I really didn't have much faith in him. But this was his third time facing the Pistons in the playoffs. This time, he knew what to do. And soon enough, I would have faith in him, as he would blow this team out in an Elimination game five. He's done it. It's a 30 point game with 30 seconds left. This thing's over. Put a bow on it. And so now, finally beating the bad boy Pistons, Wimby felt like he could take down anyone. And he didn't only feel that way, it looked that way. As this Bulls team would smash the gears off the Knicks in the second round. And then in the Eastern Conference Finals, he'd do the exact same thing to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Big down! Let's go to his first NBA Finals, man. He's hyped, I'm hyped, you're hyped, maybe, I don't know. And Wimby was hyped to be facing the Trailblazers in this NBA Finals. He wanted to show male pattern baldness Clyde Drexler who the best player in their draft class was. And that's not the only reason he was hyped, because if he won this year, that means he would be beating Michael Jordan, who won his first chip in 1991, as I mentioned before. But on the other side of that equation, if Wimby lost to the Blazers, that that means he'd be losing in NBA Finals, something that Michael Jordan never let happen. So with all that being said, the pressure was on. Victor had a lot to prove in this series. And with the series starting off in Portland, it was clear that it'd be over in Chicago, as Kevin Duckworth would get absolutely fried for four games, and Wimby would finish this team off with a sweep, winning his first ever championship, like I said, a year before Michael Michael Jordan. That's it, man. NBA champion, Victor Wimanyama. Oh, hey, I like the sound of that. I don't actually talk like that. So while this would put him up one to zero at this point, we still got a lot of time left. If Wimby even wants to come close to the greatness of Michael Jordan, he's gonna have to get five more. But nonetheless, Wimby beat Mike to his first championship, and MJ, well, he didn't like that. In other news, Victor Wimanyama wins his first NBA title. He's not better than me, though. Oh! Beat his ass. Please don't hit me, Mr. Jordan. But now it seemed like it was time to make MJ a little more angry. 
because Scotty and Wimby now have tasted a championship. They want some more. And in this 1991 season, they finally get to a one seed. And it seemed like they might just do it again. My beloved French Prince has finally gotten this team to a one seed. And it goes without saying that this would be the French Prince's first MVP season. So I don't think it'd surprise anybody that in these playoffs, there wasn't a soul in this league that could guard him. And the Chicago Bulls, as expected, would be right back in the NBA Finals with a rematch against the Trailblazers. And let me emphasize that the Bulls in this playoff run had only taken one loss so far. Far. You'd be pretty goofy to think Mr. Receding Hairline had any chance this year. And so while the Blazers would somehow get a couple games on him, this thing was over in six. Wimby was running it back to back, and I can't say that this was that surprising. Bring it to him, bring him his second ring. Oh my god. Hey yo, what the fuck? So after whatever that was, Wimby would be celebrating going back to back. He was now claiming his second championship, but this season, Michael Jordan in real life also won a championship which was his first so with Wemby currently on track to beat Michael Jordan he had no time to get comfortable as in the 1992 season he would go off having his best season yet winning his second MVP and averaging a disgusting stat line like this it's gonna be hard for anybody to beat you in a series so with that being said Wemby would ass blast the Pacers then the Cavs and then of course the New York Knicks, meaning that once again, for the third season in a row, Wimby would be facing Clyde Drexler and the Portland Trailblazers. You've been down this road before, huh, Clyde? <laughs> Nerd. And if Clyde wasn't already bald enough, facing Wimby in the finals every year was just expediting this balding process. And so once again, the Blazers would somehow get two games on him, but this thing once again was over in six. Wimby was three-peating. He was still on track to beating Michael Jordan, but MJ was still within striking range. At this point, he had claimed his second championship to Wimby's three. But now, in the 1993 season, Victor had a chance to do something that Michael Jordan never did. And that was to four-peat, meaning he was going for four championships in a row. And not only would this be an amazing accomplishment in itself, but Wimby had to do this to get a championship ahead of Michael Jordan all time. Meaning that Victor was clearly locked in. He wanted it really badly. He wanted it so badly that the Bulls would have a 67 and 15 record. On top of that, Wimby would be claiming his third MVP, and additionally, he'd be getting a Defensive Player of the Year. And in the playoffs, I didn't think anybody was stopping this Bulls team. They were just too good. But in the second round, somehow, some way, the Cleveland Cavaliers would be taking a 3-2 lead. And this was the toughest situation Wimby had been in in a few years. It would appear that Mr. Wimbanyama is in a bit of a pickle. And so in this elimination game, in just round two, still with an opportunity to pass Mike in championships, Victor and the Bulls would go into Cleveland, and they would start to get blown out in the fourth quarter somehow. What is that? You're missing that layup. Uh, he's in his own head at this point, man. So with Wimby exiting in just the second round, he'd be stuck at three championships. And this year in real life, MJ would have gotten his third, completing his three-peat. And so just like Michael Jordan in real life went to clear his head after this three-peat, playing minor league baseball for the White Sox for a season, Wimby would do the exact same. But let me just tell you, there is nothing scarier than a seven-foot-four guy stepping up to home plate. Listen to me, kid. You got what it takes to make it in this league. Ah, uh, never mind, dude. You're f***ed. So yeah, Victor was terrorizing the MLB, but in 1995, it was time for him to get back to terrorizing the NBA, as he'd be returning on March 18th to play the Pacers, coming back like he never left, having a phenomenal game. But the thing is, they didn't have Wimby until now, and the Bulls were already eliminated from playoff contention. But there is nothing to worry about, they'd be back competing for championships soon enough, as in the 1996 season, Wimby 
of course would have his footing back under him, but additionally the Bulls would be acquiring one of the scrappiest, toughest, and weirdest NBA Holy players shit. of all time. What the fuck is this? So although for now, Wimby wasn't too sure about his new teammate, that would change quick. Because this Bulls team would wind up going 76 and 6. This was the greatest record of all time, even better than Jordan in this season who went 72 and 10. And as for Wimby's season, he would average 29, 10, and 7, and he of course would be winning his fourth MVP. But before we dive into the playoffs, I have to up the stakes for a second by jumping ahead to Wimby's two seasons with the Washington Wizards. As Victor would come out of retirement in hopes to get a few more championships, except the only difference between him and MJ is that he actually passed Kwame Brown the ball, which would ultimately lead to the Wizards' downfall, and they would miss the playoffs in both of these two seasons, meaning that these last three seasons with the Chicago Bulls were all Victor had to tie Michael Jordan in championships. So make your final predictions now as we dive into the 1996 playoffs, where there wasn't a single team in the Eastern Conference that had any chance, as the combination of the point forward skills of Scottie Pippen, the two-way dominance of Victor Wembanyama, and the rabid Rottweiler-esque rebounding skill of Dennis Rodman were just too potent for the league to handle. The Chicago Bulls would wind up sweeping any and everybody in their path to the finals, meaning that they were 12-0 in these playoffs before facing the Seattle Supersonics. I guess Dennis Rodman is uh, doing the dirty work, so to speak, on and off the court. <laughs> I don't know what that means. And against Sean Kemp and Gary Payton, Rodman would keep doing the dirty work, as well as Victor Wembanyama, and this thing would be over in a sweep. They would complete the 16-0 playoff run, and this of course would also mean that Victor would be claiming his fourth championship. And you already know that Mike also got his fourth championship in this season. So these two were neck and neck down the stretch, and in the 1997 season, I can't say it seemed like it would be different, as the Bulls would have yet another phenomenal record and Victor Wimbanyama another phenomenal season, claiming his fifth MVP, going right back into the playoffs as a one seed and blowing all the way through to the NBA Finals where he would face the Phoenix Suns who really had nobody to guard him since Charles Barkley was gone, meaning that this fraudulent Suns team never stood a chance. So of course, this series was put to bed in five games. Victor Wimbanyama had a ring now for each of his five lanky fingers, but Mike of course would be getting his fifth as well, leaving us with just one more season to see if Victor Wimbanyama could at least match the greatness of Michael Jordan. And it goes without saying that Victor was locked in. He would win his sixth MVP and also another Defensive Player of the Year award. And in the playoffs, we don't even need to waste time. This dominance would of course carry over as he would march the Bulls to the NBA Finals where they would face the Utah Jazz and Predator Carl Malone. Why don't you have a seat right over there? If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, I'm not gonna say what Mr. Malone did, but let's just say he delivered to the wrong mailbox. So now, the one thing standing between Victor Wimbanyama and tying Michael Jordan would be the mailman. Would Victor be going out with a fairy tale ending just like Michael Jordan in a win against the Utah Jazz? Or would he come up short and be labeled as the inferior basketball player? Well, we'd be getting the answer pretty quickly as things would get it started and Carl Malone would take over. In this alternate reality, the mailman would deliver and he would dominate Victor Wimbanyama in five games meaning that Wimby would be one championship short of Michael Jordan in this different era of basketball. But what if we jump forward to an era of basketball that allowed for skinny, stick figure-like players to succeed? Players just like Kevin Durant. If Victor Wimbanyama took KD's place, how would NBA history pan out? Well, you can figure that out by clicking on the video on the center of the screen. 